Welcome to part 15 of the Uncharted Drake's Fortune Let's Play. So in case you didn't know by that, well, in terms of the timing when I paused this, when I got back to the session, I kind of went a little bit ahead. Although I kind of failed that, you know, jumping off the vine and grabbing onto the ledge. <laughs> so, I guess I have to pay the price there. Ah. <laughs> so, yes, like I said last time, from part 15 and onwards, there's going to be a lack of parts only because I am not going to be as active as I was apparently before my second semester of college but like I said I'll bring up as many parts as I can in fact what I'll try to do is since I have Monday off I'll I'll at least get two parts done so I don't have to worry about because I because I think this part is this is only like around I'd say 20 parts and we're almost done with this game, actually. It's only like five parts left, and well, if you count this part, anyway. So I have, so I figured, why not get a couple parts done? And it shouldn't be that much of an issue, now, is it? So going back to what I, so going back to this part in hand, this part can actually be a little annoying, if only because Drake has a heart, because. Sometimes Drake has a hard time responding to the vine. Like, sometimes you'll have... Drake will have a hard time responding to your button inputs and he'll just drop from the vine. <laughs> and he won't jump over to the other ledge. So again, I must stress, it hasn't aged all that well. <laughs> well, the platforming anyway. But that part is pretty much over now, and we gotta drop down into this tower. We got uh, look, gotta look over to see if there's any ledge I can jump onto. Nope. Okay, drop down here. Seems pretty clear. God damn it! <laughs> These guys are really everywhere. Now are they? Thankfully, though, I can't just hang from this ledge, and I can always just shoot them. Well, I can always use this as a means of cover. You don't have to worry about straight bullets shooting your hands, causing you to fall off. You can, you can stay on a ledge as much as you want, assuming if there's no mook lower. Well, on the bottom. Anyway. Got. Next thing you know, you have more. Let's see, more grenade guys. I tried to go down here, but unfortunately, I couldn't really. Leave. I don't think that's a good idea. There might not be any other weapons down there. Although I didn't really check enough. I screw it. All I have is a pistol. And an AK-47. So, let's see how this goes. Two grenades. I hate that. <laughs> I always go rapid fire. I don't care, man. That might be excessive. There we go. He's dead. Okay, now... And I died. <laughs> I should have just hanged from the ledge, but... Uh, you know, I was... I was really superstitious on ammo. One of the only times where the blind fire actually worked for me. Great. <laughs> Uh, this part, when it comes to shooting segments, this part isn't really too bad because you're only going, like, really straight. Hey, and there's really... And when you're going straight, there really isn't much of a chance that the enemy will try to flank you. So, there's that. <laughs> and there's another grenade. <laughs> Two grenades. God damn, seriously. Enough. <laughs> Uh, I constantly have to move back. God damn it! <laughs> it's like... It's like Roman's guys have an infinite supply of them. Like... Holy shit! <laughs> Actually, I don't think I have an AK-47. It could be something else. Else guy... Feel free to correct me in the comments. But... It's an automatic. God damn it, stop doing that. <laughs> There's no way to get there's no way to get past him now, is there? Nope, there isn't. Gotta climb these stairs, hopefully. Hey, they won't throw any more goddamn grenades. 
<laughs> Jump? Yeah, I'm running out of commentary, folks. Sorry about that. Got. There we go. He's dead. <laughs> this guy's going rapid fire. Uh, I keep running away. If I see a grenade, then I run away. That's my tactic for the most part. As I recall from part six, I think. Then I gotta shoot him. Shoot him down. Oh God. Boy. God damn it. <laughs> when I get this video uploaded, I gotta title it. I gotta title it something that's more grenades. Or like something that revolves around grenades. Because that's what. Because that's what they really love here. That's like their favorite weapon of choice. Alright. Shot him. He's dead. Now I gotta wait for him. All right, I got him. <laughs> yeah, if you see an enemy, like if you're behind cover and he's behind cover, but you see like an, but if you see like a um, open opportunity, then, well, just take advantage of that opportunity. It could help you out. I apologize if I'm talking over the uh, in-game dialogue, but goddamn air freshener. <laughs> but I'm sorry if I'm talking over the dialogue, but uh, you know I'm just a little. Uh. Oh god, <laughs> I'm tired. <laughs> well, I mean, like, well, I'm not so tired to the point where I want to go to bed, but. Actually, I think I'm starting to get a bit of a headache. I should have started this part a little later. A little later. Oh boy, now we're doing the second run of the church. <laughs> My words exactly. You've got to be kidding me. More enemies. <laughs> it, it, it's crazy. <laughs> Wait for him to show up again? There we go. No, wait. Nope. Ah. <laughs> I could have just went in gun bla guns blazing, but then again, he has a shotgun, so I don't want to get... Ooh, excuse me. I don't want to get instantly killed. Uh, oh my, oh my god. <laughs> I'm yawning all the time. I can't help myself. So wait, so press select. That's one thing I actually, that's one detail I, I actually do like. Like where you know, there's actually a bullet hole in in the journal, in, in, Sir, Francis, in Sir Francis Drake's journal. And, and it's not really just shown in the cutscenes, it's also shown in the gameplay too. That's actually a nice touch. I actually do like that. It's a detail that a lot of you probably don't care about, but... Yeah, detail is detail. I appreciate detail whenever I can. Uh, this part, this platforming segment right here can be a bit annoying, if only because, as it's kind of hard to tell where you're where you're supposed to go. Well, like, okay, the thing is to solve this puzzle is that. If there are two big keys hanging on each side of the cathedral, so what you got to do is, in order to activate, at least move these keys, you actually gotta jump and hang on, and hold on to them, since they activate as switches. I thought that was a thing. I thought there, I thought that was a ledge you can jump on, <laughs> but no, it's actually a little bit. Um, it's actually a little. It's actually a little bit later. So I have to redo this segment over again because my own because of my own stupidity. Uh, oh god, <laughs> I'm yawning all the time. I apologize. <laughs> that was the more crumbling ledges, more crumbling ledges. In case you, in case you really couldn't tell. In terms of all the uh, cathedral shootouts, though, this one isn't really that bad. Well, actually, no. This one is. 
Why did I say shootouts? But of all the times that you're gonna be in the cathedral, this isn't this isn't as bad. But it's definitely not. Like it, it's definitely the shoot when you're shooting the enemies at the beginning of you know the area. It's not really that bad. So you don't have to worry about of dying all the time. I mean, well, at least from bullets. So what I gotta do here is that I gotta move on to the, um... Well, actually, I gotta move the, uh, key again. Only, instead of just jumping off the ledge like an idiot, I gotta actually look for a, well, <laughs> for a ledge to jump on. So again, it is a little bit of a ways back. I'm not sure if there's actually a time limit to get to the next key. I think there might be, but... Oh god. <laughs> but here's what you need to do. You gotta jump onto this chandelier, and you gotta jump uh, backwards. You wouldn't really know offhand because as the, uh, the gap between the... Well, the gap between the uh, chandelier and the ledge that you're on is actually pretty far. And so you get the impression, hey, that looks too far. I probably shouldn't jump over there, but you can. That's kind of weird game design. <laughs> I think about it. Da -na 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 -na. I gotta include that sound effect. <laughs> oh god, that that's like Zelda territory at this point. You gotta insert the uh, Zelda chime or the Zelda fanfare. I'm gonna get to a Zelda game soon, but considering the timing, it's probably not gonna be a good idea. Especially when I'm considering Ocarina of Time. You gotta be kidding. <sighs> hey, Sully. I'm here. Remember Roman and Navarro? That red herring you sent them on to get them out of the way? Yeah? Well, they're sitting right on top of the treasure vault. Oh, of all the goddamn luck. Look, I'm gonna need a diversion to get them out of there. You got it, kid. One diversion. Coming right up. And Sully. Yeah? Once they're gone, meet me in the mausoleum. But come through the catacombs. It's safer that way. Gotcha. Now I've just gotta get past all these goons without getting noticed. Oh, oh boy, this part, this shootout segment and where you know again and stealth isn't really all that much of a necessity well it's not much of a necessity but stealth isn't really so much much of a good idea since enemies can spot you real easily but you, but for the few moments that you are actually not spotted you might as well take advantage of which is what I'm gonna do here I grab the uh, the dragon well, the Dragon Sniper. And I look around to see which enemy I should kill first. And I don't exactly kill the enemy, but... That's what set off the, uh, shooting part. But once you- but once you actually are spotted, and you are greeted to two snipers, and a grenade launcher guy. Great. <laughs> hey, again, my best bet with the snipers, just constantly roll. They'll constantly roll and you should be able to and well they should be able to get the uh well get the laser sight off of your head because because once again a headshot is an instant kill I don't think I said that enough <laughs> that and um well, that's probably a piece of advice I'm gonna probably have to share when I get to the final boss yes there is a boss in this game I mean, only one boss, which is the final boss, but it's still a boss. <laughs> and he's, well, a pain in the ass. I I won't get to him until we get... I won't get to it until we get to it, but... Wish I could right now. Then again, I'll... Well, once again, I'll save that for later. And I'm just wasting bullets. There we go. Just shoot him with my pistol, not major. Have to hide behind these graves. There's a guy with a grenade launcher after me. <laughs> like, son of a bitch. And, and not only that, once you get up here, 
you have a few guys with shotguns. This is me having a dumbass moment where I try to go back for the M9 and try to do something more. <laughs> Here, I'm not really paying attention to where I'm going, and I got shot. <laughs> okay. So, after many deaths later, I decided to do it the right way. So, here's what I do. Well, I hide behind cover. Obviously, that's probably a good idea to do. I aim with my sights, and I look for the two snipers that are they're just going to be aiming right at me. This way, it'll make my life easier. Uh, Got it. Now, I, I also have, and once, actually, once the shooting segment is triggered, I have to look for the, uh, I have to look for the guy with the grenade launcher. Well, at this point, I can only take out one sniper, so thankfully, I can hide behind here where the snipers and the great grenade launchers can't get to me. Because there are, and there are going to be mooks that are going to be coming up the stairs as well. So my best bet is to just, for the majority of the shootout segment, hide here. Just hide here and you should be fine. Hey, uh, in cases like this where, hey, you can like, where they, where they're gonna be going up the stairs, uh, I think you're supposed to go to the stairs though, just in case of, I don't know, they trigger it, you're actually triggering something, and I died, <laughs> ah. okay, this, that wasn't my successful attempt, I apologize, it's, okay, I wasn't successful at, at, at editing, and I wasn't 100% successful in my editing, but, ugh. <laughs> so, I try to, I take him out, which is a good idea, and I take him out. Okay, so, that's good. And both snipers and the, uh, the grenade launcher guy they are out, so well, that'll make my life easier. I grab the shotgun, just in case, because the shotgun, again, powers, packs a punch. That's always a good thing to have. Especially in Uncharted 1, where you're pretty much going to need all the firepower you can get. That and a good strategy. That's the one, I mean, as difficult as these shooting, shooting segments may be, like I'm, like I'm saying with the Ratchet and Clank thing, where it doesn't have as much, where I feel it doesn't pack as much ammo, as later games. At the same time though, because of the fact that the enemies are, are I don't know, smarter than how they are in um, in later games, means at the same time it does does give off a good strategy. Yeah, like it gives you a good opportunity. To like, hey, these guys are these guys are packing a lot of heat. Like snipers and grenade launchers, shotguns. I gotta think of a strategy, and fast. If you die too many times though, and you get that impression, especially when you're dying too many times, aims at a level, and you're thinking, okay, okay, I really need to get a strategy down. Especially when you're let's playing. In fact, if, in fact, if there's one thing that you're gonna be taking note of when you're let's playing a game, I'll say right off, right here is that I mean, granted, when it comes to casual play, you're not really going to count on how many times you're going to die, but in terms of, of when you're let's playing a game, then that's when you start, that, then that's when you're going to start taking note of that, whether you're going to like to or not. Okay, so three more guys are coming down the stairs. Use whatever ammo I have. Four rounds, four rounds might not get me far, so I have to make, well, four shotgun rounds aren't, Probably won't get me far, so I'm gonna have to go back. Thankfully, the dragon sniper is still here. Hopefully, I pick it up. <laughs> Hopefully, I pick it up. He's dead. All right. I think I pick it up. Do it. Okay, maybe I don't. Maybe I don't pick it up. <laughs> Well, it's well. Then again, it's there if I need it. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to like move around, kill that guy with the shotgun. Perfect, 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 
perfect indeed. Got it, like, next thing you know, I gotta, gotta go down, go down these steps just to make sure. Okay, hide behind cover. Okay, got hit with a shotgun, right? With the power of a shotgun. I want to move back so oh, I don't get hit. Now I got to wait for him. Pick up the dragon sniper. There's two rounds. And booyah, he's dead. <laughs> ah, it's always satisfying to complete a shooting segment that was giving you such a hard time. It really is. Not even in Uncharted, like even when I'm playing like Grand Theft Auto 5 where... I mean Grand Theft Auto 5 does have a lot of difficult shooting segments as well. And unfortunately unlike GTA 5, there's really no... How should I put it? There's really no like power-ups you can get. Well not power-ups, but like limited powers you can get. Like if you were playing as Michael, well you would slow down time. And if you were playing as Trevor, you would... Well, okay, Michael, this is definitely if you were playing as Michael DeSanta, then you were, Wait a second. yeah, it's he so gets to slow down time, which isn't really too useful as, which isn't really too useful compared to Trevor's. In fact, Trevor's, I'm not a fan of Trevor's character in all honesty, and I know I'm going to get a shitload of hate in the comments section upon saying that, but he does have my favorite, um, Man, power, really my favorite, uh, helpful power in the in the game because not only does he like not only I think time does slow down a bit there too but I think what makes Trevor's more useful is that it makes you less vulnerable to damage and it make and it makes you a bit stronger which is really good Franklin doesn't really have a power a power up in the in a sense where it helps with the shooting but it does help with the driving, and it does really help with those chase missions. Like if you want to make a hard left or a hard right. So, that's good. But going back to Uncharted. <laughs> 2007 Uncharted. This part right here can be a... Well, okay. You guys may, you guys may see it just fine here. But what makes this part hard for me is that... Again, the windows, it's bright and, it was bright and sunny out and I couldn't really see. <laughs> I had to close the shades at points, at some points. Just like in um, Crash 1. But all you really need to do here is turn these symbols, those to the right spot. In case you need to, you can always refer back to your journal. Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 4 might actually have the easiest puzzles in the series. And I, at least in my opinion, Uncharted 3 definitely had the most difficult puzzles. Hmm. We'll get to that when we get to Uncharted 3. <laughs> Looks like we're in business. Ooh. Yeah. Heads up. What do you make of it? I don't know. Could be a dead end. Wait. It looks like there might be a passage this way. Uh-oh. Uh oh, shit. What the hell's that? Sully, get out of there. Huh? It's a trap! Oh. Sullivan, are you okay? Sully! Yeah, yeah, fine. Still in one piece. Oh. You knocked me on my ass, though. Yeah, well... You better get back to the library. We're gonna have to find another way out of here. Okay, so now we're just back to Nate and Elena. From chapters from chapter 16 to chapters, I think 19. I think that's the case. So anyway guys, this is it for part 15 and the next time we meet in Uncharted 1, we are going to be going through the treasure vault. I'm GameMan5804, see you all then.